at the end of the day, while it's going to be different, I think it's well worth doing for the athletes, because the athletes have been waiting now uh, for a very long time to take part uh, in the Games. Uh, 2016 in Rio seems a very long time ago, so let's hope it works. So it's not going to be easy. Uh, the management of an Olympic team is obviously concerning the British Olympic Association, you know, day by day, minute by minute at the moment, because the BOA have set up their normal, excellent pre-games training facilities, how they look after the athletes. All of that has to work within the, the rules set by Japan. They, we still hope to take the, the full uh, predicted uh, number of athletes uh, from 206 National Olympic Committees. But if you think about it, they are likely to be in the village only for certain periods of time, covering their own sport, and then they'll go home. So in a sense, this is a little bit like the wave uh, issue, which works at the, at the youth games. Um, and that reduces uh, the time athletes will spend uh, in the village. Um, spectators, international spectators, are not allowed. That's a great shame. I feel particularly sorry for the parents and families of athletes. I mean, it could be the only time that the, the, the family have a chance of taking part in the Olympic Games and they can't watch it. But from an organising point of view, it's very difficult because actually, again, if you think about it, the, the local organisers and the Japanese government would have no control over these people. Uh, dealing with accredited people only gives you an element of control. So you can impose rules like uh, a clear test before you get on the plane, a test when you get off the plane, uh, transport restrictions, you'll be in your bubble, uh, and with a bit of luck, uh, circumstances will be uh, sufficient in Japan that that can all work.